the historic reel in a picture pong scave is thus transformed. Even with the featured photos and notes collected during the making of his films, not a single artifact can be banal anymore. History then is nothing else but this transformation. A moment of serenity can be a moment of madness. Or conversely, the madness can be serenity, can be so ordinary. During his lecture, when asked why he makes films, he names few of the things most valuable for him. His boyfriend, his dog, trees. That's why he insists I make films on these ordinary things. Castro somehow for a moment forgoes this act of completion, mistaken for a snapshot or the now ubiquitous screenshot. In the portrait, a woman pulls down her top. The bottom of the work looks like it's in tatters, simulating a ripped hem or maybe a possible surge, the image escaping its own imagery. And so it is with the other two female portraits, an old lady puts on her lipstick and strapless bra, and a young woman pimps her locks. What then adds to this appearance of mere analog assemblage is that, due to the inconsistency of each bead's roundness and size, the images, unlike their smooth, pixelized provenience, become crude and distended, giving it texture, but also rubbing it of virtual depth. Perhaps last full show is an appeal to look at exhibitions differently to take away preconceived notions and a stance of over-analysis of a strict white cube intellectualism and move into a stance of immediacy and primary encounter. Not to oversimplify a work, but to make a museum experience more candid. Not to hastily scour for subtext, but to focus on the present by being present. All the same, there is a sincere charm to the woman Manuel Conde reference. And without it, there is no way that Manny Montalivanos' three-channel video installation titled Dash Tates would have as much heft in depicting the contested Scrapley's Island brimming with documents of real-life situation in anthropology. Montalivano weaves a captivating imagery of the sea and its inhabitants that easily cut through the Biscofi Musa exemplified by the ornate hard tugger editing of the videos that grips and arrests like a child of LSD. The drunken quality and the ambient street noise of the work fills the darkened room with skittering beats that evoke and transport one to the scene of the crime. As critic Cyan Dinklum suggests, Natiya's three decade long devotion to the practice and history of painting sets forth the terms of his engagement most clearly. Natiya has built a career upon reconfiguring the emotional tenor of familiar icons, having consistently drawn upon figures from old master paintings, but stripping them of animating volition. The artist's best works prolong the act of looking, tasking viewers with making affective sense of beguilingly deadpan scenarios. They eschew cutting criticism and satire for the muddled feelings at the heart of political life. To say almost there is to talk about movement and space in the midst of going from point A to point B. It hints of borders and undefined pockets of being to pass through to end the journey. The gap between leaving and arriving become interesting states where one can navigate meanings taken from memory, struggle, and most of all, loss. One does not move into spaces without leaving something behind. There are a lot of arrows in my work. The reason why I put all those arrows especially on the paintings is because I'm thinking about maybe the truth or the answer I seek is never really in the painting or never really on the canvas and it's always outside that's how I was thinking about painting and I guess its relationship to real life 
I wanted to make sense of the files and archives that I have accumulated from the year 2003. Before I became a visual artist, I started my career as a commercial photographer. I echoed Marcel Duchamp's voice when uh, he said that art is just an activity and it's just a thing to do. Because of that idea, it has uh, led me to record uh, my activities. Uh, it made me feel like uh, I'm a living art and everything I do is art. And if you think about it, uh, we're constantly recording our activities using uh, these available technologies. Yung work ko tungkol siya sa translation ng text form tsaka meaning through different mediums. In a way, para siyang ano, reading ng isang artwork, then i-translate ko siya in my own perspective. Yung process ng translation, parang gusto ko lang ipakita na nagkakaroon siya ng distortion. Yung impossibility na yung one is to one translation. Mahirap siya kasi maraming distortion na nangyari. So, ipag-connect yung dalawang bagay na gusto ko, which is yung painting and then bike or basta yung labas, nature. Sa emotion kasi, nakapaglaro ako eh. Parang pwede ko pag-combine yung spontaneous na character ng acrylic at saka yung controlled na character naman ng emotion transfer. Pwede ko laruin yung background, tapos patuon ko na emotion. So, magkakombine yung controlled and spontaneous na proseso. Maganda yung tension ng dalawang yun. Lahat naman, di ba? Parang lahat ng bagay may contradiction. So maganda yung ganun ng contradiction sa nature. Tsaka yung tao, ganun din naman. Hindi man lahat ng tao controlled lang. Meron din siyang wild side. Nagtatala kayo sa Spanish-Filipino colonial past. Ano yung repercussions nito? Ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng kasaysayan nito? Tsaka pagtalaki ng kasaysayan sa iba't ibang pananaw mula sa manlulupig papunta sa tayo na linupig. So ito yung series sa trabaho na to. Ito yung nag offer siya ng critical na pagbasa sa kasaysayan. nag offer siya ng mas matinik na naratibo tungkol dun sa kung ano yung kadalasang natututunan natin sa institusyon ng paaralan, o, ng mass media. So, tinatrya niyang talakayan yung kasaysayan mula sa ibaba ito. Kasaysayan ng masa, ng tao, at kung paano tayo natamaan ba talaga nitong kolonisasyon. I would say that it's an exploration of bubblegum in terms of how it can be used as an art medium and of the processes of breathing and chewing as their potential as a sculpting method, which I use to create a metaphor for the transience of the human body. I've always been interested in ephemeral art and particularly art that makes use of organic or edible media. So as a result, I became fascinated with bubblegum and how contradictorily it's so durable and practically inorganic, yet how at the same time, when you chew it and when you blow it up, the forms you create are so ephemeral. When I started out, it's not a very intentional work. Most of it is pretty aimless and accidental. When you dispose things, it's also kind of mindless, right? So that's what a part of what I was thinking, but that's not exactly my intention to like portray a certain thing. So I feel like since I used very common tropes or images of what constitutes landscapes and human elements in the landscape, such as trash, I feel like it's easy to make a connection like almost instantly. Araw-araw ko si din siya nararanasan eh. Although lahat naman tayo nakakaranas no. Pipila ka talaga or pipila ka pero alam mo yon, hindi na siya normal kapag matagal ka na nakapila. So ayun, since na nararanasan ko yon, so okay sige, ito yung gagamitin ko. 
Kumbaga, inano ko kung ano yung pakiramdam ko, kung anong pakiramdam ng mga katabi ko, at kung ano pa yung pakiramdam ng mga nasa, nasa paligid habang nakapila. Pinaglalaroan ko yung pag-iisip ng taong tumitingin doon sa gawa ko kasi lagi nilang tinitingnan as mali or tinitingnan nila na ito ay ah, may sa demonya yan, satanista ka ba, ganito ka. Pero ang inisip ko nun is gusto ko siyang gawing nakakatawa pero na alam natin na nakakatakot siya. Kasi walang gumagawa, parang ayaw na lang itakal yung nakakatakot na bagay. Which is yung realidad. Mas nakakatakot yung realidad kaysa dun sa mga horror stories na ginagawa. It is an attempt of understanding the meaning of change and development and it's a personal exercise to understand the meaning of change in the form of a field research and data gathering. Well, recently I've been concerned like how space and human and memory relates to each other. So for the, for the exhibition, I decided to play with different materials because I think there are some information that are that are not necessary to be presented in one specific way. So that's why I use um, I, I presented a, like an installation. Actually, the booth is kind of like a sculpture, sculptural thing. And yeah, I think uh, like presenting the the work in a three-dimensional, although photography is a three-dimensional. Like the prince is a three-dimensional object. Tulad nung sinaw ng tao, alisin mo lahat ng building, alisin mo yung mga bahay na sementado, ibalik mo sa kahoy na bahay ang ilaw natin apoy. Pag ganun yung status mo, isa lang titignan mo sa gabi. Pag walang ilaw, isa lang titignan mo yung constellation ng stars or stars. Titignan sa kalawakan and then makikita mo yung beauty ng ang kadiliman. Doon ko hinugot. Universe, hinugot ko pabalik para na magawa ko siya as media at saka recreation ng isang pyesa. Well, the work is a depiction of everyday life in the vanishing landscape and soundscape of my community, Araneta Subdivision. It's a residential community, and eventually, an overrun siya ng unregulated urbanization. So now, it changed na yung landscape and pati yung soundscape. Hindi siya before and after. More of what is it now, but it still captures traces of what it used to be. The collection that I have right now is called Prelude to a Billion Years. The show is about how I dwell with materials, like how I get inspiration from uh, objects that are in my studio. How I would like present them in an exhibition space that they are in, like discarded in the studio, but they're like they have like a second life to it. I wanted something that the viewers would be familiar with, like I wanted something like they would see the work as well, just wallpaper. The closer you get and you see the details and it's as it has this familiar iconography. Yeah, I wanted to put two different elements and I wanted to have this very ironic interaction between them. 